Hi everyone, my name is Daniel. My uh, company is Stone Photo Gear. I make custom co photography gear for people around the world now and as of the time of the recording of this video, uh, 33 countries I have my gear in around the world, mostly in the Western Hemisphere. However, uh, Eastern Europe is becoming quite large and then Asia is taking off as well. Uh, but this is not a commercial for my business. This is actually a little uh, video documentary review, uh, experience, etc. talking about this camera. Uh, this is referred to as a pan field. It's called a pan field. That's the name of the company. Um, no longer around. Hasn't been made for probably at least, well, probably at least 15 years, 16 years. The fellow who designed this, uh, he's from South Africa in Johannesburg, uh, Andrew Meitjes. Um, Meitjes, my <laughs> Afrikaans is a little, pronunciation is a little bit off, so please excuse me if you're from South Africa or if you speak Afrikaans. Um, but uh, if you just Google up the name of the camera, Panfield, P-A-N-F-I-E-L-D, 4x5, uh, the camera was somewhat revolutionary for its time. It was designed in the early to mid-90s, and the original person who commissioned it was a automotive photographer, if my memory serves me correctly. He needed a lightweight camera that could shoot wide angle and uh, serve various purposes, so Andrew uh, took it upon himself to build one, and he created this. The camera serves uh, a lot of functions for both those automotive photographers who used to shoot 4x5, uh, primarily in rig shots. Rig meaning a rig that's mounted to the bottom of the car. It's like a big long arm that shoots off and then that's where you get those, shoot, you know, driving around a curve, everything looks blurry except for the car type photos. Um, that's primarily what's used uh, in those types of photographs. Well, that's when they were commercial photographers were using 4x5. Uh, for a lot of their photography. And this camera is quite light. It's not the most packable camera, but it wasn't really designed to be that. It was designed to be functional for a very specific market. Architectural photographers have really enjoyed this. Those of them whom have used it or even know about it because it does allow quite a bit of rise, which is a common, probably the most common rise and fall are the most common movements in architectural photography. It does have front tilt as well as swing and there is a zero detent for all movements. It does not have shift on the front. The shift is on the rear only but again there is front tilt with a zero detent as well as front rise and fall with a positive zero detent that stays in place. There's also a mounting hole for the Sinar uh, bellows lens shade system. So you have the rod and then the bellows that slide with the brackets along that rod. So if you choose to use that system, you have that. It takes technical lens boards, so standard 4x5 technical lens board. Um, I've used factory Linhoff, Toyo, Wista, Nikon boards, uh, cheap Chinese boards. Uh, they all work fine. Some boards obviously are built to a higher tolerance than others, but you get my drift. They all work. The bellows are a neoprene material, like a wetsuit material. They're bound around the edges as well as glued. Um, these are the original bellows. The camera can compress quite a bit. So for people who use very, very wide angle, I believe this lens, this is designed to be able to take, I believe it's down to a 47 millimeter lens. So you have like the Schneider Super Angle on XL the 47 on a flat lens board. If you want to use a recessed lens board, go ahead. But this was designed to be able to use wide angle lenses mounted on flat lens boards. It's a friction drive. There is no gear track in the bottom. It's a friction drive. So it does have a little bit of slip, but once you get used to it, it's pretty good. There are two rails on the back that, the, that glide along this base, through this base here. Those rails will also be used with an accessory that I'm going to show you in just a bit. The back is a standard Sinar 4x5 spring back. It can be mounted in either the horizontal or vertical orientation. And again, on the back is where you have your shift. And it's a pretty significant amount of shift. Let me extend the bellows a little bit. So a pretty significant amount of shift. You can almost get a 4x10 inch or you pretty much can get a four by 10 inch frame when the 
mounted horizontally. And there is a zero detent for shift. This, bar, this lever lock can shift from right to left depending on your needs. The base of the camera does have a 3 8 as well as a quarter 20 uh, threaded hole. So you can mount a quick release plate. I've used an Arca Swiss quick release plate. That plate is not included in this sale. This video is both a for sale video to show the capabilities of the camera better than pictures and text cam, um, but also a little bit of a history of the camera itself and the fellow who made it. Um, again, standard springback from Sinar. I'll take that off for the accessory that I'm gonna show you next. Uh, this accessory is an extension rail setup. It was not a stock item that came with the camera itself. You had the camera and then you had the extension rail, which was an accessory. Most people who were using wide angle didn't use the uh, anything more than the regular camera. You can use, I believe it's one, up to 180 millimeter lens on a flat board uh, with the standard setup. Longer than that, you'll need the extension rail. And that's what this helps to provide support for. So with this extension rail, you also get two female threaded holes for both 3 8 16 and quarter 20. So you can mount your quick release plate to that directly if, you, if you'd like to. It's engraved with a serial number as well as the company name. The rear frame can slide off entirely. It is notated with centimeter marks in uh, quarter centimeter graduations. So it just slides in and you can slide it along. It's not geared. Uh, I'll show you a trick uh, that if you want to use a longer lens like a 450 millimeter, like a Fujinon C or a 450 Nikkor M, uh, you can use that on this camera with the bellows pretty much fully extended. A little bit longer than that. I use a 19 inch rub that Arter, which is about 480 millimeters. And I can do it at, at infinity, but not much more. Um, and I actually have to turn this rear frame around to get it to extend a little bit longer than the normal configuration would allow for. So in, if you're wanting to mount this onto the camera itself, you have these two holes, because this is a hollow rail, and then it mounts over this. There's a male threaded stud along with a female threaded hole. Where this mounts to and then just using this thumb knob at the back hand tight nothing more and you can see it's pretty solid i like to put the i like to put my uh, quick release plate on the rail itself it provides a little bit bigger platform to mount to but for the video demonstration i'll have it leave it mounted to the camera you can also have a rail uh or excuse me an arcus fist plate or whatever mounting plate you use mounted to either one so depending on the configuration that you're looking to use when you're using the camera, you can leave it set up for that. The bellows are removable. They are a standard Sinar bellows, Horseman bellows. Uh, anything that mounts with the Sinar 4x5 rail system or Horseman rail system, uh, that's what these frames are designed and these uh, standards are designed to accept. Uh, this is a standard, uh, probably about 14 inch, maybe a little bit longer. So it's 350 millimeters ish bellows, maybe a little longer if you really try to extend it. Uh, based on my negatives that I've made in the last year, they are light tight. However, I would recommend that you do a pinhole test for yourself. Bellows obviously can wear out. Any of you who shoot large format can probably you know, understand that. Uh, but based on my negatives, transparencies, etc., even shooting out in full sun, these bellows, as well as the neoprene bellows, have been light tight. Uh, so mounting the bellows, you just have these sliding locks on both the front and as well as the rear on both sides of this extension accessory. So open them up, mount your bellows, slide in, and then the same thing on the back slide in and you're locked. Before I mount the back, I'm just gonna show you some of the movements since the back kind of gets in the way. So you have your friction lever lock right here. Again, this just slides. Tilt this a little bit so you can see. This just slides. 
along. And then I've actually found that for me, it's faster to focus using the rear. You can still focus with the front if you should like to. And if you're using a long lens like a 450, um, or if you're needing longer extension on a shorter lens for doing close-ups, then you can certainly still extend this because those rails go into the extension ramp. So all the way back, they will extend into the rail. So you have your lever here for tilt. Again, there is no rear tilt on the standard configuration. You only get rear tilt with the extension rail accessory. There is a zero detent at 90 degrees. You can just lock it. Again, on the shift, you get the same amount of shift on the rear that you do on the standard on the rear of the camera. So using this in a horizontal configuration, you can basically get a four by 10 image circle or a four by 10 negative if you're using two four by five frames, should you choose to. So from sliding it from left to right or right to left, you can get that. And there is a zero detent on, this, on the shift. Again, standard mounting for the, for the back in either a horizontal or vertical configuration. Uh, I just like, again, I just like to focus just sliding it along and it works fine for me. And if you have good hand control, you can just gently hold it, lock it in. And I've never had a problem focusing it this way. You can focus it again with the front if you choose to. Most of the time, I end up just focusing it with that little bit of movement in the rear between your thumb and your index finger. So my experience with this has been that it is a great camera to use um, if you have the time to set it up. Uh, this camera, again, was not designed for somebody shooting fast, 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 fast. Most of the time it was being left set up on a tripod or on the camera rig. Uh, for my style of work, I need something that's a little faster for me. So I'm moving to using my 8x10 camera with reducing backs. So I can have one camera for pretty much everything and I use 5x7 and 4x5 reducing backs. That's for me. But for those of you who might be leaving the camera a little bit more set up, like if you're in a studio setting or even if you're working out in the field, I found that uh, the best way for me for this camera to be used is in conjunction with like a larger carrying case where you can leave the camera essentially set up like you would with a, a regular monorail camera, a cambo, a Sinar, Horseman, etc. So it's not the most compact, it's not designed to be compact. The in how the camera breaks down, I'll just do that for you. Unclip the bellows, unclip the bellows on the front here. This is if I was going to be packing the camera away. Oops. Wrong one. You do want to make sure you have the right one. Bellows off. Unscrew this while holding it. Slide off. And then your tilt here. And unlock. And then this folds flat and then you can lock it up. So as you can see, it folds up to be quite thin, and then this can be inserted into the camera case. What you can also do is uh, you can take the, if you want to take the back off, then you can put it on the camera and then have the bellows left here so the bellows aren't loose. I just leave the bellows loose personally but it allows you to be able to just pack this down quite neatly. And then you have the camera set up, set up itself. Now, this does not fold. Uh, this, as you see it, is how it stays because the rear standard is one solid piece. It's the way it's designed, it's the, essentially one solid piece. This does not fold. 
Uh, it was not designed to fold. It was designed to be essentially in a case. You know, most car photographers are not running and gunning, moving from place to place to place quickly. And if they are, they have assistance. But if small and compact and light is your thing, this is probably not the best camera for you, but it is a very unique camera system and one that I have greatly enjoyed using. However, my needs have changed and I'm lightening my load uh, to free up some more room for other gear that is gonna allow me to work in the way I need to work right now. But I will definitely miss it. I am looking for a good home that can give it the use that it deserves, just as it was designed to do, and uh, I'm willing to ship internationally should you choose to 